Right, we are back from my lovely hibiscus tea chat, <laughs> coffee chat with Bryce. And I can't believe we're well into January already. So this is the first one of the new year on my channel. How are you doing, Bryce? Good. It's been an interesting start to 2024, but I think 2024 are, this is going to be an interesting, you know, we're not fooling ourselves. We know we've got a lot of bumps and obstacles to come, but you know, that's what makes life. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that fits in quite well to what we're going to talk about today, about how the body keeps a score. And um, why we wanted to talk about this today is because our bodies, we're always getting clues. We're getting clues from our intuition, our gut feel, what we look like, what we feel like. And this isn't from uh, a negative point of view. It's about anything in life. Are we going to empower ourselves to listen to those messages or are we going to try and deflect them and blame other people? Why is it important for you, this subject, Bryce? Well, for, for starters, I think that this is the foundation of where we need to return back to in order to rebuild ourselves and re-understand the world around us because we have been taught so much wrong information from the traditional schools of the MDs, we'll say. Um, I don't know what we can say on, on YouTube, but and we're learning now through ancient text and through restudying this stuff that that it's actually the body... You know, we see this a lot in the spiritual world where people are like, oh, the body, that's just ego. Well, yeah, it is It is the physical illusionary world, but the body is also, if you are not paying attention to your body, you're not in a spiritual practice Absolutely. because the body is the Shakti. It's the creation of the soul for the experience of the soul refining itself. And so the body is constantly communicating with us. It's constantly, you know, your body is so beautiful and so precious and its main job is to keep you alive through this existence and to allow you to experience life. Because if you don't know death, you don't know life, as the Emerald t Tablets tell us. We know we're on a, a time frame within our bodies, but that's no, that's no spoil alert. But within that, we have been so disconnected with everything. You know, nutrition, we've been disconnected from proper nutrition. We don't understand that our bodies are constantly communicating us. If we eat something our body can't handle, it's going to tell us. But if we've been programmed to believe that that apple is good for us, we're going to ignore the body and it's going to bring us into a deeper state of in, uh, our dis-ease, imbalance. Um, when we're emotionally stressed, the body is going to react in swelling. Your, your, your lymph nodes are going to swell. You're not going to get that lymphatic drain. And the body is going to show signs of that. And we don't, people typically don't pay attention. They just go and get the Botox or they go and get something to fix it instead of actually looking at the root of the problem, which the body is trying desperately to tell you what that is. And so I think this is the foundation. You can't, you know, you can't do any, as any, any profession out there, if you think of this as a job, you're here to do a job. No foundation out there, no job out there can cannot exist without its foundation. If you build a house, you need a foundation. If you, you know, if you're a dancer, you learn how to do a plie first. Mm. That plie is going to carry you all the way through the ballet company until you're doing the big advanced stuff, but you're still doing those plies, right? So we all have to come back to this place of re-understanding our existence in this body. And it comes with understanding that the body does keep the score. I love it. And it's it's so fascinating, this subject, because what a time now where there's so many people are in a natural way from all the programming. We can blame that as much as we like. And when I mean, when I'm talking about blaming things, I'm not saying it's not true. Please get me that I'm not saying it's not true. But once you've brought awareness to something, then it becomes a choice. And so for me, I'm really aware now of when my body is giving me feedback of when I'm off course. And of course, I do it all the time. You know, however much I teach nutrition, I teach a lot of holistic therapies that like you do. But it doesn't mean that I make the right choices for myself all the time. And of course, there's certain times where I let stresses get on top of me. And that gives me many clues as well. So cortisol levels are off the scale at the moment. Um with cortisol imbalances caused by so many different contributors. And it is very difficult for us at the moment. People say it's never been more difficult. I would dispute that. I would say if I was fighting in the trenches of World War One, I, I think my cortisol levels would be way yeah. off target more than more than probably my modern day living in with all the pollution that they're throwing at us. 
but it's all relative and you know these things it's not a competition it's about us all being on our own journey and deciding whether we're going to take personal responsibility so when we look at ourselves you know we can look at our eyes we can look at our skin we can look at our hair quality we can look at our tongues we can look at our nails we can look at our our energy levels our thoughts where are our thoughts telling us are we we were discussing this off camera are we looking at something and we're immediately going into blame or criticism mode or are we looking at something to go into compassion and helping in some way again taking the judgment out of this just doing an honest assessment because whatever you want to do in life if you're not honestly assessing your starting point, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, one of the main things for making any change in any areas of your life is to be really honest about what your starting point is so that you know you can then plan what changes you need to make. I'm so glad when you were saying hair, we must be telepathic because I was thinking about the hair actually because we're learning that your hair is actually part of your nervous system. That's why when you people, your hair stands up on your arms and stuff, when you get nervous or scared and you get goosebumps, it's part of that nervous system. And you can tell my mom's family, they're all in the medical industry. And they would always, whenever I'd see them as a kid, the first thing they would do, look at my hair and then they'd take my hands and look at my nails. Yeah. They, I was checking my, my health. And it's interesting, um, down in New Zealand, the uh, original Kiwis down there, they had these long, this long, beautiful hair. And they would be, you know, out navigating the water and they never got lost. They always knew where they were. And then they cut the hair off and all of a sudden they couldn't navigate the water anymore. And so to me, that's such a powerful story because every element of our body, there's something more in depth. The hair is just not there to keep the head warm and to look good in a, in a, in a haircut. There's a purpose, mm -hmm. just like the organs, you know, our, our kidneys and our livers aren't just there to kind of detox their energy sources as well. You know, they need, that's why twisting is important because it massages those, those organs. And, you know, the more vital your organs are, your vital organs, no, no matter, you know, the vitality that they, that they carry, that's how young you actually are going to be. And that's why things like yoga are also very important because they, it stretches those organs. You know, it's, it's, um, how many people are constipated all the time? You know, how many yeah. people, and they just ignore it and take an X lax and, and move along. I know you're doing something on gut health, health now, Catherine. And whenever you deal with that, that's, that's a stress response. Oh, a massive stress response. Anyone who's got animals knows that poop is a major talk of the day. You know, we all naturally, if we've got a baby or an animal, we keep an eye on their poop because it tells you so much. In fact, for those of them that are on my happy gut, um, happy you course I've got a whatsapp group and I've just shared a really good podcast on poop and how it's giving you signals because it really is and I think that's such an important point in terms of look we, we we're so consumed by external information at the moment it's all consuming it's all around us it's impossible to avoid but how much is it serving us because most people are the sickest they've been and you cannot make good decisions when you're feeling your vitality levels is so low because it's affecting your energetic body as well as your physical body. And I know you've got it. I've had the lovely um, Yvette Rose, Metaphysical Anatomy, on my channel several times. She's incredible. And I know you've got some great books to show as well. But the thing is, our body stores all this information in loads of different ways. And the as you say, our hair is an antenna. And when I went on my trip in September to America, I was sharing a room with a friend and the hairdryer was faulty and it burnt all our hair. It's absolutely horrendous. It's still, it's still growing out. It's horrendous. It's really literally burnt our hair. But you can feel that in other areas of your mind that you know, everyone who knows that's got animals with whiskers, those whiskers are a hugely important part of their sensory journey. And if you cut the whiskers, you can affect so many aspects of their health, mental and physical. Um, same goes for clipping horses and things. So the more we talk about intuition a lot, but for me, you cannot separate intuition from the body keeps a store right. part of your intuition is to really honestly assess we've all had those days well I certainly have where you look in the mirror and you think god I look haggard I look tired I look a bit gray I look uh, my vitality's gone 
And then you can put two and two together and say, right, what choices have I made or circumstances have happened, have got to me this, and then what am I going to do about it? And this is, I think, where we're at now. We talk about the great awakening, but we can't change anything in our lives from a very low vibration, from a from a place of depletion. Yeah, your body is the vehicle for your soul in this life. Mm -hmm. If we think about a car, if you're if you don't change your oil, if you don't if you don't maintain your car, it's going to die a lot sooner than than it than it should. And that's the same with your body. If you're not maintaining, it's interesting. I was thinking about these things and how so many people, young people, are having a hard time with like cardio work. And isn't that interesting, guys? Because mm -hmm. when we look at aerobic work, especially we're looking at the heart being a valve and the lungs being these pumps and it's bringing oxygen into your body. And it's also allowing you when you get that heart rate up to get stale oxygen. How many people have ever talked to you about that as actually getting old stale breath that's still lingering out. It's pumping it out of your body. So the fresh, fresh oxygen can move, can oxygen, oxygenate the, the body and also allows the blood and your blood is literally the Shakti, the expression of your physical life force and your blood specifically for you is the biggest healing medicine that you have. Mm -hmm. And so to get it to actually move and filter through the body by, by bringing that cardio up is what's going to also, that's why when people are done, if you've ever been a runner or done some cardio, when you're done, you feel this sense of peace right? You feel this sense of, wow, I feel really good right now. It's because your body is actually responding to, it's almost like pressure washing. You know, when you've got a dry, we have big driveways here in America because mm -hmm. long and they get dirty. And so you have to get this hose out that just like it pressure washes very hard power. And you see all this muck come up and then it washes it away. That's what the sweat is through your pores. It's detoxing your, 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 the bad stuff out. And that's not just food. It's not just, it's also your thoughts, your emotions, but isn't it interesting that this thing is stopping people from doing that? Absolutely. From actually yeah. utilizing that, 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 that beautiful thing that we've been given in this life to cleanse ourselves. It's such a good point. And, and this is where the spiral happens. And what I would really encourage anyone to watch this, because everyone watching this is going to be in a different starting point of where they are health wise. But it's never too late to make those changes. This is the thing is our bodies are repairing and regenerating every single second of every single day. And what you are telling it, the information you're feeding your body, and when I'm talking about body, I'm talking about mind, body, spirit, is is going to determine what your body makes, what genes are expressed, what proteins are made, um, etc. What nerves are fired, what, what nerves are not fired, what neural pathways open up, what neural pathways close down, and so it's in a constant state of flux. And I think information overload. It's a really I've been thinking about this a lot recently because I've got I've got a list of a whole load of courses that I'm really excited to start doing. And for me, it's all about how do I get that balance right between, I think we've spoken about this before, about between acquiring knowledge and then implementing it, acquiring, implementing it and not getting stuck in that cycle of just acquiring it and not actually doing anything for it. Because as I said, you're not going to get fit by watching someone else go to the gym. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's total integration. That's the thing too. People get so worked up about waiting for things to happen. Well, why wait? Just do it yourself by taking your health back. It is going to genetically, actually, it's interesting you say that because in yoga, my teachers talked about this and they have done studies on this. If you spend your life practicing yoga, you are genetically altering for seven generations below you. We talk about correcting yeah. karma, being the karma breaker. Your body I think sometimes we get like doom and gloom, like, oh my God, my mother had cancer, so I'm going to get cancer. Well, you might inherit that karma, but you might not because the body is constantly, that's the thing, Catherine, it's not one and done either. It's a whole life. And I love how you posted something on Instagram yesterday, which was like a dead tree trunk, mm. the new tree sprouting out on top of it. It's never, as long as you're breathing, you can start again. Yeah, because the body's and it's it's not like, you know, I've been doing this for 18 years. If I were to stop exercising today in a year's time, I would not look as healthy as I look now. It's a constant. You're constantly doing this. And that is I forgot to show it. So I've talked about this book a lot. The body keeps the score. I don't know if you read this book, Catherine. Yes, I love it. I absolutely love it. 
it's very intense like he mm-hmm. goes through, but it's it's very scientific in the way that he looks he uh, he goes through the body and its reactions and its caring of information and and it's interesting Catherine because it's this it's this tango between accepting that you've been the victim of something but then deciding not to be the victim anymore does that make sense yeah like, completely and and letting yourself I think it's really, really important what you've just said there, Bryce, about letting yourself feel that and not go into judgment mode for yourself because things do happen. You know, we don't know what we don't know. It's why we're so passionate about when we, and good grief, we're not certainly not pretending we know everything, but it's why we're so passionate about saying, um, you know, when we find something else, we're just going to share it because we haven't all got time to research everything. Otherwise, we wouldn't be out doing and moving our bodies and growing our own food and getting out in nature and whatever sunshine you can get. Actually, it's really sunny in the UK today, so I shouldn't say that. But this is the thing. It's all about a constant self-assessment. Where am I in today? Where am I this hour? You know, when they talk about being in the present moment, to me, this is what it's all about. It's not get in the present moment and then beat up what you did before or what you're about to do in the future. It's get in the present moment and make the right choices from that moment. Absolutely. And the choices you make or or the next day might be different. And, the, and you're allowed to change. You're meant to change. You're meant to ebb and flow. And there's nothing, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about like our audience, our friends watching right now. Like I'm going to challenge you guys to just take you know, go take a good long hard look at yourself in the mirror today and and instead of like being upset because you have bags under your eyes or upset because and you know speaking of skin like i notice how much sun affects me like getting yeah. that vitamin d and i can tell not from the way i not only from the way i look but when i can see my skin is looking really pale and i'm looking tired and i'm feeling tired i know i need to go outside in the sun for like an hour like i know that's the remedy and that's what my body is trying to tell me it needs vitamin d because sometimes filming i get stuck inside for a very long time for many many hours so i would ask our audience like go take a good hard, hard look at yourself in the mirror and ask your body don't be mean to your body mm-hmm. don't be like how dare you have love handles how dare your eyes be swollen how dare you have these wrinkles Thank your body for getting you through this and then ask your body what it wants you to know and then start to shift and change. You know, I think too, Catherine, one thing that they've, you know, I'm a huge, obviously we use in in traditional yoga, we use heavy exercise as a way to do spiritual work. And that was, I I spoke about with this with our friend Shanti yesterday. For me, that was the biggest pattern of thought that I had to change when I first started this journey. Being born in the 80s, the early 80s, I was born into a world of jazzercise, of um, low-fat diets, Weight Watchers, Metabolife, which we laughed about that yesterday, which was diet pills that everybody's mama had. It was literal speed in a bottle. I think it's discontinued now. But that was the emphasis of like diet, 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 diet. And it was all about vanity. It was, and so I, even though I was very involved in sports and we moved a lot as a family, played a lot of tennis, you know, my mother was a runner too. It was all about punishing your body to look a certain way. Mm. And so even though I've never had a weight issue, that was ingrained in my head that exercise was something I needed to do to look a certain way. Mm. But when I started to study the body from a spiritual perspective, from an inner, and I even told my class yesterday that I taught, I was like, you know, if you hold this isometric hold, it's going to up your metabolism. You're going to burn calories, but I don't want you to think about that. That's not important. What's important right now is that you're working with energy. You're feeling the fire in your quads. You're feeling the sweat. You're feeling emotions come up. Hold that and and cleanse that energy. Use that prana. And when I started shifting my thought around exercise being a tool to know myself better, I threw my scales away. Don't even care. Cal, you're gonna burn calories. That's just energy, guys. That's just gonna you're gonna burn calories just being just being awake and alive, right? That's that's just that's gonna happen. But actually being in that anger when that anger comes up when you're in that high intense you know recognizing that and letting it go everything shifted my body started to look better I started to sleep better it was like all of a sudden using the same modality but having a different perspective on it changed me completely as a person and I think that the controllers the powers that be especially in America because in America we have extremes 
we have really obese Baby people food. yeah and people who are overly doing too much and are have eating disorders it's an extreme right yeah so they've done a number on our head because i believe they know the secret and so if we can actually change that perception of moving your body, feeling your energy. And you don't, we've said this before, Catherine, don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter 10. Mm. You know, uh, my it's teacher, so important. I mean, I've, I've never known how much I weigh. I yeah. teach nutrition. I couldn't tell you how many calories are in any food because that's not important to me. My body will tell me when I need more and my body will tell me when I need less. And, you know, you know how you feel and not all calories are created equal anyway. So you can oh. have two bits of food, which on paper, but it's the vibration of that. It's Is it nurturing your body? Is it organic? Is it full of chemicals? Has it been stored in something for six months before it gets to you? You know, there's so many variables in it. So for me, when I'm ever working with myself or people, it's all about learning to listen to your body, taking the cues, course correct as you need to. Um, because I, I have no idea. Because for me, weight, I mean, muscle weighs more than fat anyway. So it's a complete, you know, red herring. For some people, it can be really, really useful, particularly if you need to lose a lot of weight or gain right. a lot of weight. It can be a really useful guide to help get you in the right mindset. So I'm not dismissing it completely at all. And also it can be very motivational for some people. So some people, if they've got a particular objective, say with regard to weight, it can be really great to know what your start point is. And then you can set yourself a target and you can feel motivated as you're moving towards it, but not as a rigid thing that's making a decision about am I healthy or not. It's just one part of the main deciding factor in terms of what your body's telling you and what you can do. And that will change on different days with different weather, with your cycle, or particularly if you're a woman, um, so many different things. But I love the idea of people going and really taking a good self-assessment. You know, there's no better time than now. I know it's the start of the year, but it's not really the start of the year. That's a whole different episode. But let's just say it's a really good time for us to take assessment and just say, Look, what do I want my life to be like? You can't manifest if you don't know your starting point. So even if you're looking at increasing your wealth, for example, it's all linked. Health and wealth are intrinsically linked. When you feel better, when you feel more peaceful, when your nervous system is calmed down, you're going to be able to bring in a higher vibration of quality of life. And with nutrition too, it's interesting. I have, there's a, a teacher in India that says, when you're eating food, ask yourself, is this a live food or is yeah. this dead food? Is that avocado, that a live avocado, or is that like dead potato chip? Like what, you know, really seeing food because it's just prana, it's energy, it's life force. It's not, and you're right, Cal uh, Catherine, not all calories are created equal. Mm -hmm. They're not all created equal. And it's interesting when you look at little kids, kids know how to, they know their hunger signals. Yeah. A kid will stop eating. My mother used to get so mad at my dad because he would want us to finish our plates. And my mother would be like, stop it. I don't want our girls to have a weird relationship with food. If they're full, they're full. You know, mm -hmm. like don't force them and getting back in touch with listening. And I will say, even with exercise too, the more you, you do this, the more you're going to pay attention to your subtle, you're going to start to understand your subtle body more. And a lot of that is subtle body responses where you're going to be, become more sensitive or get, you're going to become aware of how your body's reacting to certain things. You're going to become aware what your digestive system is actually telling you. And, you know, not all nutritional food is made the same for different people. If you look at our, we've done episodes on the doshas. If you're Vata, you're not going to be able to eat raw hanging fruits. You're going to have to like cook the apple, you know, because it changes the chemical compound because your disposition, your energy is going to be different from somebody who's more kappa based if you're vada based. And so it's all going to look, there's going to be, there's no one size fits all. And it's up to you to decide, you know, if somebody sits there and tells you the keto diet works for everyone, don't go back to that person. Completely. Right. Because it's not one size fits all. It's it's you know, belief systems come into it so much as well. So people, there's a there's a huge debate about let's go from one extreme to another, sort of completely plant based to completely carnivore based. And the thing is, is your belief system is absolutely critical for this. So trying to argue with someone that you don't know what their belief system is, because there's so many studies that have been done, you know scientific studies take them with a pinch of salt if you like but where they've actually measured the body's reactions to certain foods 
and they can give people different foods they could say look this stuff is really full of toxic chemicals and everything but you can eat it and then they can give them and their body will have a horrible reaction to it and then they can give them exactly the same food and then tell them that it's really super nutritious it's really clean and their body will have a different reaction so where people are in circumstances this is where the mind body spirit all plays into things this is where gratitude comes in this is where so many ancient cultures really had ceremonies around food and because when you have the right energy intention towards the food you can transmute virtually anything well probably anything rather than virtually anything well, it comes down to blessing your food. Like when I was a little kid, I don't know if people still say, but we would have to sit at the table and say a blessing. God is great. God is good. Let us thank you for it. We would have to say that blessing. That is blessing the nutrients of your body. And even if you're a Christian or not a Christian, it's the same thing. It's just blessing. Some people will do this over their food. There's a great Vedic chant that my boyfriend will do over his food sometimes with his hands to bless it before putting it in. Instead of just randomly snacking and eating without thinking actually putting thought and awareness into what you're bringing into your your body and um yeah it's it's uh you know i'm doing i, I want to bring you on this series too Catherine Onostic. i'm doing a health an esoteric health and wellness series which yeah. health and wellness is esoteric it is part if you look at all the old mystery schools of egypt the yogis of india this was their this was their kindergarten class this was the foundation yeah. you can't you can't read papers on physics on quantum physics unless you learn your abcs you mm. can't be a spiritually evolved person unless you understand and you start to get to know your body again and you get to know this this the spiritual experience that you're having within this this vessel that you're in for this life and and so that's where people need to like halt turn around go back and i know a lot of people have gotten mad at me for this but i will not go to a healer a reiki healer even a tarot card reader if i know they're not working on themselves because how how can they help me if they're not clearing themselves? I mean, to be honest with you guys, I've got my leotard on because I'm after this, I'm going to film a new video exercise video for Gnostic. And I actually worked out this morning first before filming this extra workout video because I, as a teacher, as someone providing this, I need to make sure that I am grounded in my body and all my stuff's worked out for the day before I can be of any service to you as the person watching. If that makes sense. It's so important, you know, what you were saying about, and again, I'm really calling out for people to think about this, not from a place of judgment. So for example, you know, if you've put on weight, if you're feeling stiff and lethargic, if your hair's frizzy, if you're, you know, whatever it might be for you that you're really noticing, it's just a starting point. It's just information. It's just information. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. And it's like you can be a really good tennis coach and not be able to take tennis yourself, play tennis yourself. But it's 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 asking the question, what am I going there for that information for? So if you're going to someone, um, if you're going to a cookery class, and the, the person teaching the cookery parts looks really unhealthy, really overweight, whatever it might be, you know deep down that they're not going to be teaching you healthy nutrition. They might be teaching you how to make amazing cakes and biscuits and or whatever else it might be. So it's common sense. It's not a judgment as in a criticism. It's just like, what information are you asking for? And that's what you're going to get. And I think choosing wisely. So if you're looking for intuition from some of these definition things, then surely you want to be asking for intuition from someone that's actually tuned in for themselves as well. Otherwise, what information are they passing on to other people? So again, it's not from a judgment sort of things. It's up to you in terms of what you're looking for at that time. And with your body, if you've gone any sort of spiritual journey, most people believe that we've chosen to be here at this time. People have all sorts of different beliefs about how much choice, you know, whether you've chosen your parents, whether you've chosen the time you're here and everything. But if you have chosen it, you've chosen it. It's like, don't go and choose a good car and then not look after it. You right. know. Or why are you going to go buy a car without researching the car first? Like you yeah. have to... Yeah. And I will say, like, I say this all the time to my students and I've so, I've so, said this story so many times, but it bears repeating my original teacher in America, David Garee, you know, with Ashtanga yoga, traditional yoga, it's, it's a crazy practice. It's, it's major room. You, you get very fit doing Ashtanga, standing up with your leg behind your head, four to back handsprings, 
there's like most of Shtanga people after years on the mat have no body fat. Like it's, it's just mm -hmm. a room of muscle. And David would get these like 22, 23, 24 year old girls who had been cheerleaders or gymnasts. And so the physicality was already there for them. And maybe the spiritual or emotional information wasn't there, but the physicality was there. And with Ashtanga, you have to push somebody further enough to the point where they're challenged. So for those people, they moved quickly because they have to get to a point where they find challenge, where they find friction. But when he would get, but he was kind of bored by those girls, right? The, the, there was like, okay, next posture, whatever. But when like a 60 year old man would come in who was overweight and couldn't touch his toes, David would get really excited mm. because now we have something to work with. Now we have friction. And he would always say, those who struggle in primary series, they're the lucky ones because their karma came up early. And all karma is, is lessons. It's just your work. It's just cause and effect. I think sometimes we get afraid of that word karma, but it's just cause and effect. That's all it is. It's your work. It's your lessons. We all have it. And so when you are, are meeting this and you, you decide to start this, let's say you have extra pounds, extra weight on you. Okay. First of all, be honest with yourself. I've got extra weight. I've got obviously... I'm addicted. There's addiction. There's something going on with my eating. I'm not taking care of my body. Now we have something to work with. Now there's, you know, if you look at resistance training, you've got people in the gym, they're constantly upping their weights to find that resistance. Well, look at your obstacles. You found your, you don't have to up your weights, darling. You already found your, you're lucky. You found that resistance. For me, I have horrible back issues horrible back issues. I've had back surgery when I was 17. I've currently got like five herniated discs, horrible back issues. But you know, as a teacher, the physicality, you know what I teach the best? Backbending. Mm. Because that's where I've had to really work in my practice to go from being someone with a huge scar on her back. When I first started, I could barely touch my toes. I could barely touch my knees. Now, all these years later, I can easily put both my legs behind my head and catch it. The fact that I allowed myself the opportunity instead of saying, oh, I can never do that because I've got back issues. I said, okay, I have back issues. So this is going to be where my karma is. This is going to be where my work lies and allowing myself to be uncomfortable, allowing my body to go through the twitches. And now with five herniated discs, I don't feel any back pain. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go to the doctor and get shots and medicine and you know, all that stuff because I take care of my body. So I don't feel the pain, the pain, the body isn't able to renegotiate and hold the nervous system. And that's a very power. Imagine, Catherine, imagine how much power we would take away from the nefarious ones that are part of that world organization that I'm not going to say on YouTube that have puppeted things, especially with this. Mm. Imagine how much power we would take away from them if we actually took that power back ourselves. And instead of relying on them to give us these to make our back feel better, we actually said, you know what, this is going to suck for a little while and it's going to be uncomfortable, but I believe in my body and I believe that my creator gave me everything I need to work through this. And this is just my work in this life. For some people, it's their knees. For some people, it's a weight issue. For some people, it's being too skinny for, you know, there's every, not one person gets out of this world alive. We all have crosses to bear. We all have stuff going on and it's being able to accept that. And I guarantee you, for those of you who are watching, because I know weight issues are probably the biggest issues people have. See that not as your handicap, but as your strength, because when you start to heal that, when you ditch the dieting and you're right, calorie, calorie, it doesn't matter. That doesn't diets, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, whatever. But when you start to heal the wound that's causing that, you're going to become one of the strongest advocates for other people who are also struggling. You're going to have a level of wisdom and understanding that other people aren't going to have. So it's not your strength. It's not your weakness. It's actually your strength. It's so true. It's like, you you know, it's the best people to deal with other recovering alcoholics are people that have been through it themselves. You know, there's you can know things intellectually. This is why we, we love Doug so much, because there's a different level of knowledge, wisdom, I like to call it, but words don't matter when you've been through it yourself. You know, every single person watching this will have a struggle. Every single one of us has. And those struggles will change as we go through different stages in our life. You might do really well and master one, and then you'll be on to the next stage of your learning. Yeah. So they're always going to come and they're going to go and you'll get through them. But there's something so special for those people that share their journey. It's absolutely amazing. Like if I'm looking at social media and I, I do need social media for my business, you know, how are people going to find out about you if you're not on there? 
the ones I absolutely love. Of course, there's some beautiful people in this world that look physically perfect. You can guarantee they don't think they're physically perfect, no. but the rest yeah. of us might look at them and think they're physically perfect. The ones I absolutely love, there's one of my friends and she's had three children and she shows her before and after pictures. She puts on weight and everything as she goes through each pregnancy and how long it takes her to choose it afterwards. I look at those and I just think you are so motivational because you've got the courage to show your before and your after and the transformation. And it's so amazing to see how she can transform herself, how amazing our bodies are. And it's not, she's absolutely not doing it for the vanity side of things. She's not vain at all, even though she's absolutely gorgeous. She's doing it because she's so vibrant as a mum. She's yeah. so, it's got so much energy. And also she's like, I have stages in my life when I'm like this. And I know what to do to get me back to this, but I'm not in a hurry. I'm very grateful I've been able to have pregnancies. And therefore, I'm not going to hate my body for being like this. I'm just really grateful that I can show you the journey. And then it becomes a choice to you, a choice. Absolutely. And everyone wants to do that journey because we're all on different journeys. And, and if you don't want to do that journey, that's absolutely fine too. If you're in different priorities, it's just a question of not hanging on to guilt or resentment or, or judging yourself or others who are on a different journey. Are putting limitate one of the we call it the mice or magic. One of the lim, greatest frustrations is we put so many limitations on ourselves. And part of what happens when you start to go on this go on this adventure is that you realize that those limitations were only in your mind. They weren't yeah. real. And I will say, so I, I don't know if I've talked about this to you, Catherine, but with this esoteric health and wellness series I'm doing on Gnostic, we have some exercise videos, and I had someone write in. And at their, they're obese, clinically obese, and that they recognized that they wanted to start changing their body, but they knew they couldn't be doing the all levels. And I get that because if you are morbidly obese, it's going to be hard on your joints. There's going to be some stuff that you're going to have to build up to, right? Yeah. And they, she sent me an email and was like, can you create a workout that's specifically for people? And I did it and I researched it and it's up on Gnostic right now. And so we're not asking you to go run a marathon. You're not asking, you're, you're starting with little baby steps, right? And and that, and I'm, I have to shout out, to, I'm not going to say your name because I don't want to embarrass her, but I thought, what a cool person to be oh, able to fantastic. contact me. It makes me emotional and be like, I'm morbidly obese and I don't want to be that way anymore. And I hear what you're saying. I know I can't start with the all, I'm getting emotional, start with the all levels classes. So can you help me figure out where to start? Absolutely. And I had so much fun researching this and creating this video. Um, it's up on the Gnostic channel now. And I even put it, it's 25 minutes, but I put it into sections because your first day, you might only be able to do five minutes. But yeah. guess what? That's five minutes more than you did the day before. I absolutely love it. And it's so easy to look at other people and say it's okay for them. So I, I've always been really passionate about gym, gymnastics. I love gymnastics. And when you read stories of old Bukorba and Nadia Comaneci and everything, it's hideous. They were sexually abused, physically abused, emotionally abused. Um, and so it's so easy to look at something that you view as perfection from your your place. You know, it's, it is human nature for a lot of us and to make judgments. But you never know that story. You never, never know that story. And. And for me, I've been thinking long and hard by some for everyone watching. And I'd love to know what's coming up for all of you watching. I've been really thinking about, OK, why why are we still as a collective? I know everyone's in different stages, but let's just say as a collective, why are we still talking about these things, behaving in this way? Um, you know, judgment, judgment, judgment in 2024. We've been talking about it too long and it's this lack of integration for me, it's all down to the fact that we can talk about all the problems as much as we like, but if we don't start acting up the solutions, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you accumulate about the problems, you've actually got to start doing something different on a day-to-day -day basis to make a change with yourself first. And if you don't change yourself first, you're never going to change the situation around you. I'm laughing. I actually pulled something up. I read your segment, but I'm laughing because... We have this, because you're right, we have this saying in Ashtanga, 99% practice, 1% theory. This started because of lack of integration. In the 60s and 70s, when the American guys came over to India and started to, to beg to learn from this guru, uh, Guruji, 
um, who barely spoke English. So they were like knocking on his door, sitting outside. He was very hesitant at first to work with Westerners because he typically only worked with Brahmins. And he finally let them come in and he started working with them in the practice. And all they wanted to do was sit around, drink coffee and smoke pot and talk about philosophy. And Guruji used to say 70% practice, 30% theory. But with these Westerners, he got so frustrated because he, you can sit around and talk about this all day. Mm. It, you need to practice it, though. You need to integrate it. And so he changed it to 99% practice, 1% theory. Because in theory, this makes sense. But when you get on that matter, you start to do that. It's gonna You're going to be facing your own ego. And I think we've been so programmed, Catherine, to be the victim. We've been so programmed yeah. to never being our fault. It's somebody else's fault. It's my genetics. It's never. And you're right. That makes me mad. I get that a lot from people. Like, oh, you wouldn't understand, Bryce, because you're thin, skinny and fit. I've been doing that dismisses and discredits the 18 years where I've been doing this for two hours a day, six days a week on my mat. I've gone through broken bones. I've gone through bloody noses. I've traveled all around the world, getting deli belly, getting sick. I've gone through my own, uh, like I said, I had back surgery, my own breakdowns on my mat when I, all these emotions started. So that dis that, that takes away all the hard work that I've done to be able to be in this position to try to help you. You know, and, and the thing is too, Catherine, I think sometimes people expect us to do it for them. And I get that as a teacher a lot too, just in this, in the real, in, off of you, offline, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I'm here to give you everything, but you actually have to do it yourself. Yeah. I cannot do it for you. I can tell you what to do. I had to do it for myself and it's hard. It's really, really hard. It's not going to be rainbows and butterflies. It's going to be dark, stormy nights of working on your own stuff. And there, I saw this yesterday. I'm going to read it. Um, strangely, life gets harder when you try to make it easy. Exercising might be hard, but never moving makes life harder. Uncomfortable conversations are hard, but avoiding every conflict is harder. Mastering your craft is hard, but having no skills is harder. Easy has a cost. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a reason, you know, why they call it the cost of convenience, convenience costs. And we think... We've been led to believe, and I know when I'm saying we, it can be really annoying for people because we are talking to the converted on our channel. So I'm not quite sure how else to express it. It's just a general saying, population. About in general. And I'm also talking about myself most of the time as well, because there's loads of things I need to do differently. Loads of things that I need to course correct on all the time. Um, but I think it's really funny. We, we've we been led to believe that the cost of convenience means that, you know, if you buy pre-made foods, it's going to cost more money in the in the monetary sense. But it's so much more than that. You know, we talk about words being spells and they are they really are spells. The clues are always there. And sometimes we can choose to interpret it like that. And we're really missing the full meaning of it. And it's like one of my missions this year is to really get people to get the joy back of spending a lot of time in the kitchen preparing with love their food. And whatever that might be for you, I don't care what sort of diet you choose to follow, but just to put that time and energy, because by doing that, you are showing how important it is. You really, really are. And you will naturally lead on to better choices anyway, because you'll feel the energy of what you're buying. You'll feel the vibration of it. You'll feel how it makes you feel. You'll know when it was worth it or not. And I think returning back to these simple things is so transformational. You know, we can get really overcomplicated about things, but eat well, sleep well, move well, drink well spend time with people that lift you up that are not looking to criticize and life becomes a very different ball game really absolutely it's just like when you people tell me all the time i don't have time mm. to do that. i don't have time to do this well if you make time just 30 minutes watch how everything changes for you and watch you how so differently i mean why well, sorry to interrupt but you'd laugh at me when I'm cooking and things like this, I'm doing all sorts of things. I'm doing oh, yeah. sports. I'm doing this. Yeah. I never just stand there by the same because I don't go to the gym because I've got a different lifestyle. I know you don't go to the gym. You do it at your uh, your home. But I do like when I'm filling up the horse's water, when I'm poo picking the horses, things like this. I'm doing funny little things. Now, I'm sure I could do better. Um, but it's, it's the same you muscles you're moving on. It into so yeah. many everyday activities when you're picking the kids up from school and everything. So it's about being creative and having fun for it and prioritizing it. 
Oh, I do. When I've been filming all day, if I've got like a lot of filming and I have, I, I've just been sitting here filming between um, filming. Sometimes I'll get up and do like 10 jumping jacks. Yeah. You know, I, I heard, actually, I heard Bob, Bob Harper say this. He's from the biggest loser show here in the United States. And I, um, I actually agree with him. You know, we talked about like people like around two, three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon, they get that slump and they go yeah. reach for chocolate to, to get a pick me up. Well, why don't you just do a back bend? Because yeah. there's so much energy in your spine. And I laugh with my students all the time. When you start doing deep backbending and you really, when you come out of that backbend, it's the best high ever. It's better than any drug. It all of a sudden, because energy just releases in your blood system that's been held there. Why hide it? Why hold? You will feel so much better. You won't need to reach for that, that snack, those Skittles, because you've now released that energy in your spine. You know, and so there's, it, you're, I'm glad you brought that up, Catherine, because there's so many things. I've seen videos of people cooking, doing leg lifts. Oh, I do. It's hysterical. Yeah. I could laugh. I'm not very elegant when I do them, but I incorporate it into everyday things. And um, it's really easy and it's really funny. And also it really lifts your spirit because you have a really good laugh at yourself as well whilst we're doing it. <laughs> so oh, wow. okay. and something too, everybody loves to dance. Yeah. Why don't, why don't just take like 20 minutes to go in your living room, crank your music up or put your headphones on and then just freestyle. No one's watching you. Yeah. And see how you feel once you're done. That's you know? why I love my rebounder. I've got a really cheap old rebounder. I've had years. It's still going strong. I've actually got one in the rabbit's enclosure because they love getting on it as well. Um, and the thing is, in between different things, you can just get on and have a jump and a play and move really yeah. gentle on your joints. Um, you know, and, and when you put things like this, people say, oh, well, I've got this, I've got that. But of course, not every form of exercise is appropriate if you've got a specific injury you're dealing with. So do your research. If you've got an injury, you research it. I'm not a fitness instructor. But it's so fantastic and it's fun. So if you're like in the middle of winter and it's pouring as rain outside, well, at least you can do that. Yeah. And it's oh. so, just be creative. Just be creative. And I'll say as somebody who works with people with injuries are never a reason to not move. Yeah. But with that being said, we don't want to work against your injury. We want to work with it. And I work, I mean, I've had, I've worked with students all the time with bad knees. We all, cause we want to keep that blood pumping. And, and again, if you guys go to Gnostic TV, you're going to, all these exercises I'm putting up, I'm doing it in my house. You can do it in your house. And I show modifications, always show modifications for you to take. Modification is not better or worse. It's just different. And yeah. if you've got a bum knee, if you've got a bum hip, we can work with that. Don't just say, oh, I can't do it. I practiced my Ashtanga practice, extremely modified, but practiced with a broken sacrum. I had literally broken my butt and I was still doing, and it was painful, but I, and I think it's what, what, that and the bar I incorporated, I think that's what made me heal. So now, now at 40, I think because of, because I had that injury, I had a choice to make. I could either quit and be pissed off and never work out again. Or I, I chose what I did choose to do, continue moving, incorporate other modalities to help heal me. And now at 40, almost 41, my body is stronger and more open than it was at 30. Because, yeah. of, because of that injury, because instead of just quitting and giving up, I said, okay, this is a puzzle now. I'm going to have to shift and do things a little bit differently. And it ended, it ended up being so beneficial to me overall because I made that choice. And just, I could have easily just said, screw it. I broke my sacrum. I'm just going to lie on the sofa all day and cry and eat junk food and watch TV. But I didn't. I took, maybe had one day of that. But then I said, nope, I worked too hard. We're going to work with this. And so again, see your weaknesses is actually your strengths. That's where, yeah. the, that's where the, I tell my students, pretty yoga. I don't want pretty yoga. I can go to Cirque du Soleil up the road. They're performing up the road. And you want to watch me do yoga then. It's not I love messy yoga. Messy yoga is juicy. Messy yoga is I could be one of these people that they do a comedy show on because, and it's funny because I used to be so supple and I'm not at the moment, but I'm taking the backbend challenge and I'll let you know how we all gone. So what I would call to action to everyone doing this is like Bryce said, you know, at some stage over the next 24 hours, when you're on your own, go and take a really good look at yourself in the mirror, just with a loving heart and write down in your journal or a diary an honest assessment of what really stands out for you. Don't pick at every little knitting piece. We could all be there writing a big long list. What are the key things that your body's trying to tell you? And then pick one of them and make a commitment for the next few weeks to start working on it and just see what starts transforming for you. 
Yeah, I just, I just talk to your body. What do you want me to know? What are you trying to tell me? And the more you do that, the more you're going to come aware of the subtle responses. Your body is beautiful. It's amazing. Don't sit there and look in the mirror and say, I'm so ugly. I'm so bloated. I'm so fat. My eyes are swollen, whatever. No, your body is fucking amazing. Your the body keeps the score, my friends. Your body is the most beautiful tool, whether it's overweight right now, whether it's whatever. Your body's amazing and it wants to work for you, but you've got to participate in this tango. Love it. Absolutely love it. So I'd love everyone in the video below, in the comments box below, motivate other people. Give us one thing that you're working on. And then what we can do, Bryce, is over the next few weeks, we can keep coming back to it. We do, we, we will read the comments. And if you know, if you need any help or you want us to discuss a particular subject, let us know. I'll put the link to Bryce's series on um, Gnostic TV because it's absolutely fantastic. This is cheaper than any gym membership. Most of our listeners have got busy lives. This is easy stuff that you can incorporate. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need to leave your house. You can do it where you are. Um, if you've got children, you can have fun doing it with them as well. Incorporate changes for them. So let us know what you're going to be working on. And then we will be back next week on Bryce's channel to talk about who knows what. You can tell us what you want us to talk about. Thanks so much, Bryce. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.